Well, Matt, we've talked a little bit about serializing and deserializing yep. with system text JSON, you know, different data objects or reading from files or different mm -hmm. web requests mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we've talked about that that JSON isn't exactly in the exact format that we want. Yeah, because a lot of times, let's let's put it in this situation. You have an app that you wrote. Yep. And let's say we're doing our weather again, and you have a property called wind. Yes. And it's been there forever. It's it, you know, it's you you've been building it for a long time, and it's there. And all of a sudden, the place that you're pulling the JSON from, the file that I gave you, yeah, now calls wind wind speed. Yeah. Or vice versa. You or know, vice versa. We we change things up. I change things up on you. You don't need to refactor everything just because I'm finicky. Finicky. Yeah. What do you do? Can we do that with this? Well, Just... there's plenty of ways of doing this, and I think that's a good example. And another example is, yeah, like in the world of reading and writing values, you're right, they don't always align. Yeah. I might want to call it wind speed, but you might say wind. You might say wind speed, I might say wind, right? Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, we might go back and forth. Maybe it's temperature Celsius, maybe it's temperature Fahrenheit, maybe it's just temperature, right? Maybe it's F. Maybe someone gives you data and they've minimized the data so much down, that's not even wind speed, it's just W. W. See it all the time. So system text JSON can help that. So let's go ahead and check it yeah. out. Yeah. All right. So we're inside the code, and we've been messing around with this weather forecast, um, serializing and deserializing. So this is very simple. Like all we have so far is this weather forecast. I'm gonna scroll yep. down here. We have date, temperature Celsius, summary, and wind speed. Wind speed. I want it to be wind speed because wind that can be direction, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know what that means. Wind speed. I know what that means. Exactly. Is it in miles per hour and kilometers per hour? <laughs> uh, we probably add another value on there for that, yes. Now, if we look at the JSON file that we had uh, saved out that you gave me, we can see, just like you said, you called it wind. Right. Yep. So if I go to read this file, it's not going to know what to do mm -hmm. because for all intents and purposes, wind and wind speed don't align yep. right here. Yep. So it's just going to skip it. It's not going to do anything with it. And exactly, and that's actually the default. That's out of the box. If mm -hmm. for some reason the names here don't align with um, the properties that are in the JSON blob that's coming back, it'll just ignore it. Yep. So in this case, if I read this file, it's going to ignore it. But we can fix that up. So what I can do is on this win speed, I can say JSON property name. Okay. And I can give it any name that I want. And in this case, I'm going to say wind. I love it. So what this is saying is, hey, don't use the name of the property as the name that's in the JSON blob uh -huh. that's coming mm -hmm. in. I'm going to tell you what it is there. So if it was yeah. W, lowercase w, w, for right. example, right? right? And what this will do is it will map your wind to here. So this means now we're speaking the same language. So yeah. now... Here, where I take this weather forecast and I serialize it out, even though I say wind speed, it will read and write it as just wind. Wind. Perfect. Let's go ahead and run this here. And that's what we want. We basically want to align how we're talking about these objects. So here's our JSON string coming back, and there it is, wind coming in of 10. Mm -hmm. That's the string. The string. The string. Yep. So that's going to be the key for all intents and purposes coming back. And when I write it out, we see it right here, yep. wind. Wind. Yeah. yeah. So now if I write that to the file, now if I read it in, X, Y, Z, I'm totally yeah. good to go. The JSON string always says wind like we're expecting, where you, in your object, in your class, you can say wind speed, which is a little more descriptive. Yep. Exactly. Awesome. Now, right. that's cool if, of course, I know the exact, you know, item here and all of these things align, but that's not always the case. Right. Um, sometimes when I see in JSON, I see a lot of things like this. I see different camel casing. Right? Yeah, I mean, there's like snake casing and like things with dashes. I mean, there's a lot there's a of lot. different different types of casings, and they have all cool names, and I don't remember them. But camel casing is one I do, and that's what you have here: a lowercase to start, and an uppercase in there. And can I this system .text .json, which we'll just call .net JSON? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Does that, can I do anything with that, James? Yeah. So what's really cool is when you're reading the data in, you can actually ignore the casing if you if you so desire. Okay. So you can just ignore it completely. But when you're writing it, you want to write the JSON in a format that you're going to expect. So yeah. this is your format, your schema, if you will. Sure. I want to match your schema. Yeah. Okay. So one thing that I would do first is I would align the wind up, right? So I'm going to say wind, wind. 
mm -hmm. here that because I want it to be wind speed, so I'm going to match the property name so it aligns here, right. for example. Because that, because our data, the JSON, is going to go out over the internet. Yes. The idea is that somebody else will be consuming it too, yeah. and you want it to be properly cased and everything else so somebody else can use it. Exactly. Their application might be expecting exact matches. Now, what I could do is I could take this JSON property and I could put it over here, right? and I could say date, temperature Celsius, summary, like, you know, I could, I could basically copy this JSON property onto all of them. Sure. If I want to be really, really specific about it. Mm -hmm. However, you're right, System Text JSON handles a lot of this stuff for me automatically. If we remember here, when I hover over serialize or deserialize, I can pass in JSON serializer, serializer options. What are, are those? Well, those are optional things in different formatting that System Text JSON can use. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. I'm going to say var, I'm say serialize, uh, serialize options equals new JSON serialize options. There it is. Okay. And inside of here are a bunch of uh, different items. So we have things like allow trailing commas, we have converters, we have encoders, we have max depth, we have number handling, uh, property naming po policies, the name case insensitive for reading. Um, again, there's all sorts of things. Yeah. You know, write indented, for example, that's a cool one. Some of these sound pretty cool. Yeah, so there's a lot of these just built in things for me. So if I want it to be indented instead of just minimize, I can yeah. have that on there. Yeah. I like to have it minimized, creates a smaller file. But I can say property naming policy, and this is cool. Um, this allows me to come in and say JSON naming policy. And look, there's a bunch of them here that are there built we are. in. Kebab case. Kebab. That's the one I like. We got yeah. snake uh, case upper, snake yeah. case lower, kebabs. We got camel case inside of here. So we have all those here. So uh, what are these, I guess? Good so question. Let's we'll start with camel <laughs> casing, and we'll just start there, OK? So all I'm doing is I'm taking this serialization options, and I'm going to pass it in now into this um, serialize. Mm -hmm. And what this is going to do is it's going to first respect this. So if I actually made this capital wind, it would respect my property name that I've assigned. OK, so the no. lower you are to the actual property, the better, yes. as far as like, not the better, but where is it going to respect? It overrides. It overrides, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to say this is wind. So respect wind, don't respect wind speed. Mm -hmm. But for date and temperature, use camel casing here. Yep. So okay. let's go ahead and run this here. And this should be really nice because now when we get back this JSON string, it's going to use this you know, camel casing policy that we uh -huh. have set up in general. And here we go. Date, nice. temperature Celsius, summary. And wind, it respected the wind. It respected the wind, Boom. made it set a wind speed, which would have been lowercase, uppercase. Nice. And that's our JSON string that we saw come back. And you can see this is a little bit different than what we had before because there's a lot of slash r slash n's inside here because I said right indented. Yes, you did. Yes. So now when this outputs it into the console down here, we can actually see it's a nice indented. Mm -hmm. Great for debugging, actually. Yeah. So you much. could maybe wrap that with a, a conditional compilation flag, which is cool. Um, so there you go, camel case. Well, look at the other ones. You, which one do you want? Do you want to I want to do a kebab, okay. yeah. Let's do a kebab uh, uppercase. And this is cool because if you don't even know what kebab casing is, which I don't, we're about to figure out. I think it know? has the dashes in between, the like dash. you're kebabbing the letters together right before you grill them. Oh, interesting. The question is, do you have to soak the dashes, the hyphens in water first so they don't... Oh, a splinter into yeah. the temperature. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Anyways. <laughs> so there's temperature Celsius. So there's yeah, there the, it is. Yep. There it is. Yeah, very cool. What about that other one? What's the, the snaking? Yeah. Um, so I'm imagining if that is the, uh, let's do snake lower. Let's see how that turns out and run that. I'm assuming if it's, um, it must be below. Underscores. Right? Yeah. Underscores. Underscores. So there we go. And there we go. Temperature. This is good that we have like one at least in here. The temperature <laughs> Celsius. There we go. Yeah. That's cool. Nice. And that way, Whatever we're thinking, or whatever our JSON string is expecting, we can do it. But you know what, James? There's only like five there. Yeah. You know, kebabs, upper, lower, Crazy. snake, upper, lower, camel case. What happens? You know, I'm just expecting wild case, all upper. <laughs> all How upper. can I shout at my <laughs> shout case? At me. <laughs> okay, cool, gotcha. So you want everything to be uppercase. You don't want any dashes, no underscores, mm -hmm. or anything like that. Okay, perfect. Well, the cool thing about the property naming policy is that you can create a custom one. Nice. So uh, I've done that already. 
And what if I told you it's only a few lines of code? Oh, I love it. <laughs> I was going to type it, but I was like, yeah, here it is. <laughs> OK, so here's the class that is the upper casing name policy. So uppercase name policy. All you do is inherit from JSON naming policy, okay. which those other ones do. Uh -huh. right? So there's some that are just built in. Right. And then here, I'm just saying, hey, when you convert the name, just here's what you want. I want you to do with it to upper. Boom. Nice. Right? So I could do you know, to lower, to lower invariant, to whatever, right? Anything you want to do. You could have really custom ones that you're parsing different names, you have some customization inside of it, anything like that. And you can see here that it's really, really simple. Here's the ones that are built in automatically, yep. the, the casings into it. And it's really just that one method, convert name. That's all it is. One simple abstract class that needs to get implemented. And that's it at the end of the day. So all I need to do now is instead of using one of the built in, I'll just say new uppercase naming policy. Nice. That's it. So let's go ahead and run that. Now you're sh screaming and shouting weather at Yeah, me, yeah. Uh, which is well, that's great. That's important. You know, it's just important. in case there's a severe weather alert or something yes. like that. Temperature Celsius, and you're good to go, right? <laughs> so now we're, we're yelling and shouting. And these options apply to reading and writing. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So here in this instance, I'm um, writing the file, but I can also read the file, and okay. I can determine specifically if you gave me the file with the kebab to, to specify kebab casing for reading the data as well. OK. It's the same sense. exact one. The so serialized and deserialized take in the exact same okay. properties too. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I think one other thing that's of interest that I think is kind of cool is that here we have date, temperature, summary, wind. Mm -hmm. But now, what if, for example, I didn't want wind at the bottom, right? I wanted okay. wind at the top. All right. Just your manager. Matt. Thinks I, <laughs> you're your manager, yeah. I like that. Yeah. All right, I'm your manager, yep. and I'm wind is the at the top most important thing to me in a weather forecast. Yes. All right. How? But by default, the and when it's serializing or deserializing or when it's serializing, serializing. to a string, mm -hmm. it's going to go through in the property in order and yep. put wind at the bottom. But that's no good, James. You want to get promoted, wind wind's at the at top. The top. Yep. How yeah. can you do that? <laughs> so there's a bunch of little cool little flags inside of here. So we talked about the JSON property names that were inside of here. Um, and like you said, by default, this is going to basically index 0, okay. the properties. So here, date, this. And you saw them output there. Yeah. I could also come down here, and I could say JSON property order. So if I want to type in JSON, there's a bunch of things in here, yeah. right? Oh, look at all these things. So there's a lot of these things, like required fields and source generation stuff and includes and all wow. this other stuff inside of here. So this is really, really nice. But there is specifically the JSON property order. Now, you can assign a property order to every single item. Uh -huh. And again, they start at index 0. Or you can just assign it to 1. So I'm going to say negative 5. So just bump it on up. no matter what, right? Yeah, all the way up there. Up. So negative 5, go all the way to the top. Now, when I run this, what we should see is that our wind, ideally, is at the top when we're serializing this out um, here. Yeah, and sure enough, is. there it is right there, wind wow. right at the bottom, 10. Perfect. So that gives us all everything that we need. And again, we can actually add a breakpoint here, run it one more time, actually prove it to you that the, the wind is there automatically. There it is. And sure enough, there is wind there. Now, I also want to note, though, that remember, wind is not shouting at me. Why is that? Why is that? That's because, like we talked about earlier, it is respecting right. those down closer to the object class. Yep. So kind of be aware of that when you're creating these different items inside of it. That's going to mm -hmm. respect those things that are there closest to you. But you have that really tight control, yeah. which is good too. Which is really cool. You can really get down and fine tune it right at the level that you that you need to. Yeah. And what also is cool that you, you can serialize enums mm -hmm. as well. And um, so you really can. We'll put, you know what we're going to do, James? What's that? We're going to put the link to the, all the documentation. Because yes. you know what? It, there's so much that you can do. There's that. all those dials yeah, to really tune turn. it in. Yeah, yeah. as so, you saw. So enums, you can also do different casings for like dictionaries as That's well. Right. Yeah. So there's a lot of fine-tuned uh, control that you have. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So yeah, super cool. There you go. Kind of a nice overview introduction of kind of all things, naming those properties and values and getting it how you want it and giving that customization. Yeah. yeah. Love well, it. There you go. There's 
a nice introduction there, but we have a whole bunch of different videos here on the .NET YouTube for all of systemtext.json. We'll put a link to the playlist below, so definitely check that out. And don't forget, if you like this video at all, give it a thumbs up, jam that subscribe button, become part of the notification squad. You get updated every single time we put out a video here right on the .NET YouTube. That's going to do it for this episode of On.NET. Until next time, I'm James. I'm Matt. Thanks for watching.